Joining the mating edges of such thin plates presents certain challenges. Typical clamping methods do not work because the plates would buckle under pressure. The method you are about to see is simple and uses no clamps, just some plywood and items you are likely to have around the house. We start by cutting the plates to the shape of a tapered wedge. The jig we use, called a joining board, is then set to the shape of our tapered wedge. The plates are placed in the jig with a weight to hold them down and gently tapped into place. The wedging action between the two fences of the joining board provide the clamp force necessary for the joint and the weight on top keeps the plates from buckling under pressure. Okay, now that we have a basic understanding of the steps, let's get started. Okay, now that the edges are jointed, we want to clamp it back up as it was before with both ends flush and we're going to use low tack painter's tape, the blue tape commonly found in hardware stores. You don't want to use any other type of stronger tape, uh, packaging tape, tape, scotch tape, duct tape, anything like that. You want something low tack so when you take the tape off it doesn't pull up the fibers, especially on the soft wood of the spruce on the soundboard. So, our edge is flush, and I'm just going to put three pieces of tape on that edge to hold it in place. Same thing for the back. Okay. Okay, so we've taped the ends. Now what we want to do is, in preparation for gluing, we want to make, turn our two book matched pieces into a wedge shape, kind of like this. Um, and that, and you'll see why when we get to uh, the joining section. But for now, we close this up to get our wedge shape. We're simply going to draw an angled line. The actual uh, degree of the angle doesn't really matter, just as long as it is an angle, and as long as we're outside of the outline that we drew. So that looks good right there. We'll just draw that out. We're going to take this over to the bandsaw and cut it. And then when we open that up, we'll have our wedge shape. Okay, now we cut just outside the line. Okay, your cut should look something like that. Okay, now we do the same thing for the back, again staying just outside the line. Now we want to even out the rough cut we made on the bandsaw the same way we jointed the inside edge. Now keep in mind here we're not creating a perfect edge like we did before. We don't need the candlelight or anything like that. We just want to clean up the rough edge. So just a couple put passes with the jack plane is all we need. Set it to course. 
Because again, we don't need a fine cut. It should be good. Of course, we will also clean up the bandsaw cut for the back plate as well. When you're shooting on a shooting board like this, the same part of the blade is being used at all times. So if I put this little shim in here, that'll raise it up and allow a fresh part of the blade to be used because that piece that I was using before is getting a little dull. What we have here, this jig is called a, jo a joining board. Um, it's nothing more than a piece of plywood with a batten screwed to one end. And this will be, we will clamp this on later as our fence for the other side. So the way this works, after we remove the tape from the ends, we will place our now tapered soundboard in here, line up the other fence so that it runs flush with that tapered edge. And then we're going to clamp that down with two C-clamps on the edge to create that tapered shape. Once we have that tapered shape, we'll pop this back out, put glue on the edge, put it back in with the glue on, place a weight, one of these weights right here on top. You can use any kind of hefty weight I like these because uh, they're roughly the size of our piece, so you're not going to have any buckling on the ends. So we'll place this weight on top like so, usually with a piece of wax paper underneath. And then just a few taps with the hammer, taps this whole thing into position. The wedge shape, along with the two light taps, provide us the clamping force we need on this thin edge. Okay, so let's get started then. Like I said, first we have to remove this tape. Um, it's important, especially for the soundboard. This is soft wood. This t even this low-tack painter's tape wants to tear the spruce a little bit, which isn't a huge deal right now because these plates are still very oversized. We're going to plane them uh, or sand them down the thickness later, but we still don't want to tear up too much of it. So the way I do that is I just, when I peel off this tape, I don't peel directly across the grain and I don't peel very quickly. I peel it gently off and at an angle to the grain. That way you're less likely to get any tear out. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, of course it's worth mentioning that I have taped down some wax paper to cover the entire area where the center seam may lie, obviously, so we don't glue our soundboard to the jig. That's very important. So now we can set up our other fence. Pull this towards the edge so the clamp can reach. We're going to line that fence up. And then I'll take these C-clamps. Okay, so now both of our fences here match the wedge shape of our two soundboard pieces. So again, what we'll do is we're going to apply glue to this edge, place in here, weight goes over top, tap into place. So let's do that. Just to 
make things a little more hands-free for myself, I like to hold this edge like that with two spring clamps. That way I can just focus on spreading the glue. You don't want too much glue, and you certainly don't want too little glue. So if I had to air on either side, I would always air on the side of too much glue, in which case you just have a sloppy mess to clean up. Um, too little glue, and you have a starved joint, which can fail. You have the right amount of glue when you spread it on the edge, and it just covers everywhere. You don't need much more than that. As long as it, you have full coverage, I'm going to take my spring clamps off. Place them in here, down on the end like that. And we can slide them into position. Just like that. If you want to, you can real quick clean up that glue squeeze out. But um, I'm going to be thickness sanding this later, and I'm not too, too concerned with it right now. I'd rather just get this on there, so place that wax paper on top so we don't get the glue all over the weight. Place my weight right there. Now I use the block, to obviously, to protect the soundboard from the blows of the hammer. I'm going to place the block so it's bearing against both edges. And when I tap the block, I should see the whole thing move uh, in at the same time. Both pieces should move with each other. The outline that I have drawn on here it shouldn't shouldn't shift. Just a couple of taps. That's it. You don't want to. You don't need to do any more than that. You don't need to force the, the thing in there. It's got plenty of clamp force just from a couple light taps, just like that. Um, important thing to note, when we do go to remove this from this, this setup here, the last thing to come off is this weight. We take the fence off first, then the weight. If you take the weight off, if I were to take it off right now, the whole thing would buckle upward, and we don't want that, even after the glue is dry. So we're going to let this dry then for about 45 minutes. Um, I let it dry for 45 minutes if I'm in a rush to get to the next step on this. It never hurts to let this dry for much longer than that. You can let it dry for four hours, you can let it dry overnight. That's, a, that's always uh, a safe bet. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing to the back plates. If you only have one joining board, of course you have to wait until the soundboard's done and then you can get started with the back plates, um, since the joining board is nothing more than a flat board and, a, and two fences, if time is a factor you can always make two joining boards and then you can work twice as fast. So since we have two joining boards we'll just get started right away in the back. Mm -hmm. 